Mr. Speaker, uh, I thank you. I, I'd like to join my colleagues in eulogizing a true left-wing politician, someone whose contribution to the public service will be remembered because of his unwavering dedication to fighting for the rights of those who are underprivileged. Mr. Speaker, when I was growing up, the late Honorable Lawrence Sifuna played a, a critical role in shaping the life of many people in this country who went against the status quo. When he was fighting against the government policies when people could not do, dare do that, when he was criticizing the former Attorney General, who was very, very powerful, Charles, the late Charles Njonjo, in terms of policies that we are witnessing today. Mr. Speaker, I would say that it is the spirit of the late Lawrence Sifuna which is now troubling us. It is the one which is making us restless, such that you can hear my good friend, my chair of energy, criticizing a government which he helped form. Mr. Speaker, it is important and it is imperative that we remain committed to be able to represent them in this uh, August House. Mr. Speaker, my good friend, the Deputy Minority Leader, you know, stood up here and he said many things. And for me, I just want to remind him what the Bible says. The Bible in Timothy 4 verse 12 says that let no one despise your youth and the youth should be allowed to explore their life even to keep the kind of hair they want to keep. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, when we stand here now troubled by the spirit of the departed soul, the late Lawrence Sifuna, when we are talking about all the challenges, you know what is so hypocritical, and allow me to be as candid as I want to be, is that I'm seeing my colleagues from the other side of the aisle criticizing policies of the government which they advocate on a daily basis, and they would not even dare say, thank you, the Right Honorable Raila Molo Dinga, for going to court to stopping this menace. This culture of trying to line your pocket to a point where you think when finally you depart, you will go with all the assets that you amass in this world. Mr. Speaker, what is ailing this society now, this country? I'm telling you, I don't even know why we should stand here and all of us just blame Ruto. No. It is the legislators who pass those laws. All the challenges we are going through, it is us. Can we please bring a mirror and look at the mirror? And you look at the mirror and you say, if KICC is sold, it is me to blame. Because what is uh, Ruto? He will, he's, he's the president, yes, but you are the one who will give him the power to sell it. So I think we should stop lying to Kenyans, and to be honest, and now with the spirit which is troubling us of the departed soul, a true left wing who fought for the rights of the people who suffer, let it continue troubling us to a point where we will say no. Because they are the ones who shape the future of this country, really. They are the ones who started fighting about liberation. Mr. Speaker, it saddens me a lot to see most of us stand here, whether you are Jewish, whether you are Hindu, Christian, or whatever you know, religion that you profess, to stand here and start blaming someone, not knowing that it is you, it behooves you as a person, to be able to leave this world a better place. Today we are being very spiritual, and today I'm being extremely spiritual. But in Psalms 116, 14, the Bible says that I will pay all my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. So I think it's about time now we start asking ourselves, what is enough? Is, it, is our salary enough? You know, we've talked about the issue of the oil. 
And what people don't know is that our financial institutions, especially the ones which are partly owned by the government, are being brought down to a halt. When a government pushes a financial institution to open a letter of credit for 20 billion shillings, and then what happens? They import the oil, the oil comes here, it is frozen, and then the manufacturing companies which were manufacturing it before, who were told what you are manufacturing is substandard, are now forced to buy. You know, the problem is this, we don't like being honest. They are being forced to buy so that they can reprocess. No wonder people say, what is happening in this country is that we are slowly killing ourselves. We are now, in fact, when I was coming in, I saw a small clip of someone saying that, listen, this, we voted for a, a government that will slowly kill you by, you know, you spend most of your time taking care of yourself. You go to clubs, you avoid getting HIV, but then you go home, you buy oil that will give you cancer. But don't worry. You can borrow from the Hustler Fund, 500, to be able to do what? To go to the hospital. But no, when you go to the hospital, there are no medicine. So you die. You forgot that you don't have 1,500 shillings to be able to buy what? To pay for your death certificate. You leave that problem to all your neighbors. You know, people speak sense. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, this spirit which is making us restless today of left wings, I want to beseech my brothers my dear brothers from the other side of the aisle, and even some who are on this side, who believe in just selling and selling and just uh, supporting every policy that comes in without thinking about the consequences and the other unintended consequences. May the spirit of the departed, Lawrence Sifuna, as he rests in eternal peace, as he leaves us in this country where we've decided to rape it, we've decided to destroy it, May it trouble us to a point where we will wake up from our slumberland and remember that we must be our brother's keepers. I want to hear my chairperson not only coming here to be able to eulogize the late Lawrence Sifuna and take the opportunity to castigate policies of a government which he, which he really advocates for. I want to hear him proceeding further and questioning every single decision so that when the Lord decides to call us and we all go, someone will sit there and say, yes, he did this and this. Otherwise, we will not be remembered. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Kisang. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the great people of Ilgemaraguet County, I want to take this opportunity to convey uh, there and my city.